Bonjour, c'est Ali. Euh, Economia est, est vraiment heureuse de vous recevoir euh, aujourd'hui euh, pour euh, un entretien sur la situation économique en Afrique. Vous êtes euh, enseignant-chercheur à HEM depuis un certain temps. Vous êtes également membre du directoire de HEM et également euh, membre de l'association euh, qui regroupe toutes les, les, les institutions d'enseignement euh, du management euh, au niveau continental et à tous ces titres là euh, vous êtes habilité à nous en parler à, vous, à nous parler de, de ce qui se passe en Afrique aujourd'hui d'abord sur le plan économique on voudrait bien, bien avoir une idée euh, sur euh, euh, le, le, le sursaut africain s'il si, 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 si y en a mais également, on, on voudrait avoir une idée sur l'enseignement en matière de management au niveau de ce continent et de ses perspectives. Alors, euh, merci d'avoir accepté euh, d'être parmi nous aujourd'hui et on voudrait bien vous écouter. Ok. Uh, thank you very much, Sylvain Thank you very much for your invitation. I'm honored and delighted to, uh, to be here at the Economia, uh, the research center of HEM, uh, to talk about um, the state of management and business education in Africa. But first, I'd like to give just a little overview of uh, some economies uh, in Africa and how they're doing uh, by region. Most um, You know, you, 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 what we, we can see right now is that the biggest economies, Nigeria and South Africa, are uh, really struggling. You know, they're uh, both very susceptible to failing commodity prices. They're stalling. Um, and despite all the resources they have, especially in South Africa, Um, there uh, seem to be uh, probably going to a recession, all right? And that's, that actually tells us how important governance, good governance, good management principles, good managers uh, are uh, in, in these kind of economies. We see also that in uh, economies like um, Uh, North Africa, we're still in some kind of a turmoil uh, in terms of political stability. Tunisia is going toward that, but it's still not there. Uh, Algeria is turmoil. We're still, um, you know, they just got a new president and uh, we don't know how it's uh, going to unfold. And in Morocco, we've been stagnating in a sense, meaning that You know, two, three, four percent of GDP is not going to allow us to create all the jobs needed um, uh, in this economy. There, were, there are a lot of young uh, Moroccans without without jobs, right? So we need to know where is the problem. Of course, uh, I can't touch on all the problems in a systemic way or in a holistic way, but, you know, effective governance and management, good and savvy uh, usage of the latest technologies, and entrepreneurship, in my view, hold the key to Africa's growth and prosperity. That's my view. You know, um, we need managers who can lead responsibly, right, who can Uh, due to, with due attention to the econo economic, uh, social, environment uh, kind of issues. They need to be able uh, to have the necessary skills, whether they're technical skills or soft sk skills, to be able to actually uh, lead uh, the existing companies into more growth. Um, as you might know already, most of our economies in Africa 
I can think of the example of Nigeria. 99.6% of Nigerian companies employ less than 10 workers. Right. Uh, in uh, Kenya, you would find 800,000 SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Um, and uh, in Morocco, we know that the economic tissue is based in a realm of 80% on SMEs, small and, uh, and medium enterprises, or even very small enterprises. So we need knowledge and content created for these kind of economies. The problem we have is that there is a misfit between the content that we teach our students, our future managers and leaders here in Africa. Uh, the content, the business cases we use are more geared toward the West where we need to have uh, local content, regional content, African content that's going to be taught to these future managers are going to actually go and work for these small and medium enterprises to, in the future, help them grow to become regional, national, and then why not international? So that's, that's, that's the idea. So. Comment faire pour pouvoir réussir un contenu de, de cet enseignement et qui convient à, à la nature économique et de, de l'entreprise africaine? Well, to change this behavior, we need learning methodologies that incorporate experience, practice, feedback, and accountability, right? Not just content and theory. Even, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a mixture. But at the same time, when you look at where the world is going in terms of the new technologies, where the world is going in terms of uh, big data and cloud computing and artificial intelligence and uh, all, this, uh, all these technologies, we cannot actually um, give our back to, to the, all these technologies. So my view is to actually focus on these two. Soft skills, meaning uh, emotional intelligence, meaning inter, uh, interpersonal uh, intelligence, uh, meaning uh, intercultural intelligence, uh, how to deal with people, how to manage people, leadership intelligence, right? That's from one side. And then the other side is how to effectively use the technologies, the data technologies, the usage of data technologies. I'm not saying that managers need to go out there and become engineers. But most, the trend now in the world is to create these cross-disciplinary bridges to where an engineer uh, needs to actually go and, and have more soft skills to be able not only to perform uh, in front of a computer, but to, for, to perform with other people collaboratively. We talk about the, collaborative, the collaboration intelligence also. Okay? And then we need for the manager to be curious enough to know more about these new technologies to know more how big data functions, how the artificial intelligence could actually help the business, to know more how to sift through um, the structured data and the unstructured data. The structured data that you find in, 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 in spreadsheets and in, in structured databases, and unstructured data that's out there talking about his or her business, uh, like I'm talking about the social networks, I'm talking about the Facebooks, the YouTubes, the, all the, all the, the, you know, the unstructured data that's out there impacting 
the manager's business. So it's, it's, you have to be really uh, with a state of mind of 360 degrees, knowing how to get the, the, the information, make decision out of it, and knowing how to make people work, uh, do the work you want them to do, meaning uh, getting the best out of the people. So these are very major, major, um, you know, uh, skills that uh, any African manager needs to have. Oui, mais euh, au niveau international, c'est une évolution qui se dessine aussi. Ce, ce n'est pas le propre des Africains. Une telle euh, mixture ou une telle euh, rencontre ou, ou cro euh, croisement. Mais euh, au niveau africain, comment pouvoir réaliser ça sans euh, qu'il y ait euh, une implication de la société civile, de la, euh, de, 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 du secteur privé et de l'État. Et dans tous ces domaines-là, au niveau africain, il y a une fa certaine faiblesse quand même. Look, there is a really we have no choice, and I've been asked this question in many, many conferences these last two years. I've been around the world trying to promote the Association of African Business School that I preside and chair, like you, you mentioned in, uh, in, you know, in the beginning in your introduction. You know, in many cases, uh, we keep saying that Africa is different, Africa has more priorities, uh, in, in trying to uh, get some other things uh, straightened up before we look at, at the technology. And I belong to that school of thought for a while. But uh, when I read deeply, I said the only opportunity we have to leapfrog, to actually jump on the bandwagon of uh, growth and development is uh, excelling in soft skills and excelling in data technology usage. So we, we have no choice because uh, when I read deeply about artificial intelligence, if you don't uh, understand it from the beginning, there is no way you're going to make it up or at some point um, catch up with the people who embraced that technology before. So why wait? We missed the first industrial revolution. We missed the second industrial revolution. We missed the third industrial revolution. Now in, we are in the fourth industrial revolution and the chances are more democratized if we can actually just put our minds into it. And of course, if I tell you some drastic statistics about Africa, you're going to say, maybe this is not a priority. If I tell you that 600 million Africans don't have an electricity, you're going to say, well, how are they going to connect to, to, um, to, to an internet? Or how are they gonna, going to uh, learn about technology if they're like that? But we cannot wait until the 600 million people get their electricity. We don't have the time and the, the leisure of time to be able to do that. And I take as an example for benchmarking uh, India. India also has 600 million people with no electricity, no toilets. But India leveraged the usage of data technology all the new technologies with its engineers from all over the world, uh, spread all over the world um, because of uh, their ingenious strategies in the 50s to um, teach people, to give people knowledge, to, to, to send people out to, to the West and to wherever there is knowledge to learn they are actually uh, harvesting right now all the fruits of all this. India is the only country in the world which, you know, 
that was able to actually surpass the economy of its colonizer. At some point in time, India's economy has become bigger than the UK's economy. Now imagine this. Moroccan economy has about 100 to 110 billion dollars in GDP. And France has 2.5 trillion dollars in GDP. So there is no way for Morocco to ever uh, surpass the, 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 the French economy uh, because of these results. But the Indians were able to do that. We, if we focus on that and have a strategy where we know that there is poverty in, in, in Africa. And by the way, I always say it in many, in many uh, panels, Africa is not a poor continent. Africa is an impoverished continent. And whoever studied this, the history of Africa would tell you that. We have been impoverished throughout history, you know, from the beginning of the 20th century until, uh, until now. Okay? And if we don't get our act together in terms of acquisition of knowledge, whatever knowledge that is, I mean, we're talking here about management, governance, business education, but whatever knowledge that is, if we don't get on the bandwagon, if we don't catch up, if we don't take this question of education very seriously, Honestly, I'm not a bearish, I'm a bullish, I'm a very optimistic person, but I don't see uh, any shadow or light of hope if we don't really get together and, and, and uh, you know, it's starting with this association uh, in terms of putting together a framework uh, of business schools by putting together an accreditation system whereby uh, schools can apply for this accreditation system, uh, uh, what we called, we coined ACRESIS, and this is a, a quality assurance system where the schools that we have in, 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 in the network, we're about 55 and we're going to become 70 or 75 very quickly because we have 23 potential schools who want to um, come to the network or join the network. If we all adhere to this accreditation system and we all follow this accreditation system and this is the first accreditation system that is proper to Africa. There was no quality assurance system in Africa at all. And few African business schools, especially in South Africa and in North Africa, were able to get some international accreditations like the uh, AACSB accreditation, which is an, an American uh, accreditation, or the Equus accreditation, which, which is a European accreditation given by DFMD, which is the, uh, the European Foundation for Management Development, or the EMBA accreditation, which is actually an accreditation association of MBAs based in the UK. Very few, we're talking about 10, 12, 15 schools in all African continent, 1.2 billion people that are actually accredited. Now, I can't keep myself um, from, you know, citing my friend, my longtime friend and uh, a, a very a brilliant scholar called Professor Howard Thomas, who actually r wrote about three books about management education in Africa and did uh, actually field work while he's uh, all, well over his 70s. He did some field work uh, in uh, visiting 23 countries and many business schools. And I'm quoting him, he said, I will be six feet under the ground before many of these business schools could be accredited these three major inter international accreditation.
So we needed an alternative. We needed an, uh, you know, an African accreditation system proper to Africa that would actually look at the content that we teach, look our, at our me methods of teaching, okay, and look at three main areas or three main keywords that are impact on Africa. So we need to look at whether the schools have some impact on Africa, just like what Economia is doing or the, the entire HEM foundation is doing uh, for, for HEM and for Morocco and for uh, beyond that. Okay. Uh, we look at relevance, whether whatever we do inside the classroom and outside the classroom is relevant to, to the economy of this country, to the economy of, 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 of Africa or not. So impact on Africa, relevance uh, you know, in Africa and sustainability to Africa. Three major things, and sustainability uh, at the Association of African Business Schools means what schools are doing to keep in business, to stay in business, because a lot of schools came, uh, opened, and closed uh, very quickly in Africa. The uh, oldest school, uh, business school in Africa uh, is about 40 or 50 years old. Right. So we need to make sure that whatever the school is doing, the governance of the school is thinking long term, is thinking in terms of sustainability of the business. Okay. And is thinking relevance to, to, to you know, uh, in Africa. And is thinking impact on Africa. See, this is, th these are the major things. So that's why, uh, You know, this, this interview came, came right uh, on time uh, for me to actually just reflect upon everything we've been doing. And, you know, this is, in 2020 is going to be the, the, the last year of my, of my, of my term. I, and I hope that we'll be able to, to do a lot of things. Like I said, I'm not only asking business schools or asking uh, the African community to uh, adopt technology, the first thing we did is put together an, an AABS uh, 3.0 platform, okay, uh, that you can actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, visit at abschools.com. And this platform gives you an idea about all the, the, the schools of, of, uh, of the network uh, what they're about, their mission statement, uh, uh, their, you know, the, the dean's message, everything you need to know. It gives you ideas about the, the accreditation literature, about the accreditation that we're putting together, uh, that uh, we, we launched back in October 2018. We only already have 10 schools in the pipeline. And we're, we're really proud of, uh, of what this accreditation could do for the existing business schools and maybe uh, also for the, uh, the lagging business schools that are not members of the, of the network. So, um. Peut-être qu'on je, je, qu pourrait parler de l'aspect un peu moins professionnel, disons, mais plutôt relation avec le, le, le public, Et la culture euh, africaine vis-à-vis -vis du management, la culture euh, publique euh, et, et, et l'attitude des Africains vis-à-vis -vis de cet enseignement. Comment euh, les, 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 les populations euh, approchent euh, une telle éducation, c'est-à-dire le, le rapport inverse. C'est pas la question de l'offre, mais la demande, comment elle se présente au niveau euh, de, de de l'approche relative à la question du management dans la culture collective et publique. You know, unfortunately, we don't have a, a management, typical management business culture in Africa, right? Um, management is still is still vague 
we have a style that we identified uh, that is uh, a cultural style of what we call Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a principle and that's actually a specificity of, of uh, uh, the African society and that is I only exist if you exist. So what we call communitarian style, right? But it's not philosophically linked directly to a management education or a business education. It's, it's the way we are, we live in communities. We, we have no credibility as an individual, as opposed to individualistic kind of uh, uh, style that you find in the West, all right? And that's a good thing and it's a detrimental thing at the same time. I'm gonna explain myself. It's a good thing because uh, if we apply management principles based on this uh, Ubuntu style, it would work beautifully in Africa. But the thing is, it's detrimental because we are using Western style, Western content, in trying to solve cultural problems we have in, in Africa. And that, is, that goes back to the importance of creating our own content. We cannot teach HR the same way as it is taught in, in the West. Okay? Uh, I spent uh, in, in a state called Colorado in the United States, where I spent uh, 15 years of my life. The labor law there says that an employer can fire an employee on the spot without any, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do we call that? Uh, I, I can't think of, of a word right now, without any notice, without any previous notice, okay? And uh, an employee could actually leave the, the company you know, I quit and I go. Okay. That's pretty much the mentality in the West. And then this employee would actually go elsewhere and find a job within two months, three months, based on the, the system that allows them to actually uh, uh, get unemployment for a while, um, get some, uh, uh, you know, uh, help. Uh, to, to, find, to find the skills, to, to find another job and stuff like that. Now, when you actually go and fire someone in an, in an African country, you're not firing a person. You're firing a family, a small family and a big family. Sometimes you find one, one person working for 10 people. So you're creating a social problem. So are we going to teach HR principles and labor law the same way in our countries as we teach in USA, in, in USA or in, 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 the, in the West? Impossible. So we have, to, to go back to your question, we have uh, you know, a, a certain social order we have a certain culture that is based on a communitarian style, okay? And that is based on, I only exist if you exist. That is based on, uh, you know, uh, we, we need to work in a family kind of setup, uh, not corporate kind of, uh, uh, you know, mentality. And that's how things work in, in Africa, but it, gets, it, it has a drawback of, again, not having any systems in place in our enterprises. And systems are what allows a company to grow from being an, a family enterprise, family business, into uh, you know, a regional and international uh, corporate business, okay? So that, that's pretty much the, 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 the cultural side of it, see? Uh, 
In, in Africa right now, management and business education matters today more than any other time. And that's for three main reasons, right? Talent, in a more general sense, has emerged as a major constraint of growth. We have some serious problems with talent. Let me explain to you what happens in major, in many companies in Africa. You have a big gap between uh, mid-managers or low managers and senior managers. Okay? The owner of the enterprise say, okay, I'm going to get the best of the best senior managers uh, from the West. I'm going to get the, the best Moroccan manager in France because he did the first, uh, he did HEC or ECP or ESSEC. I'm going to bring him here. All right, and then the the the, the managers, um, the middle managers, uh, they have some kind of a local education, all right. So you find some big gap between the skills of these senior managers coming, uh, being you know in uh, having done some great business schools in the West, and these local managers that we call. Uh, I'm going to borrow this from my friend uh, who's a member of the, uh, you know, of the board of, uh, of the Association of African Business Schools who talks about accidental managers. The middle managers we have are accidental. Why? Because they just got that title because of the, the length of time they've been in the company. And they have no skills about management uh, uh, the talent, you know, how to be, to be a manager, how to manage people. They just say, I'm a manager, I have authority, you need to respect me, you need to do what, you, what, what I am asking you to do. So we have a very big problem of ma ma African managers having a problem with authority and hierarchy. We still have the chef mentality, I'm the chef. You do what I say. There is no participative managing. There is no uh, no uh, uh, what do you call that? No 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 horizontal organization. It goes like a pyramid. You do what I have. That nobody takes any decisions. Don't talk in in meetings. I am the chef, and that's this is uh, creating some real leadership problems in, in Africa and I'm sure Economia you know did some research on leadership and, and wrote a white uh, a white uh, book about leadership especially in uh, North Africa and they mentioned this kind of a, a, of a problem there the the second reason in is institutions foundations and NGOs in many African countries are investing in developing entrepreneurial skills so like I said in the beginning, there are three major axes that we need to focus on. First is soft skills. And I mentioned uh, very, uh, you know, some, what do I mean by soft skills? Soft skills, like uh, uh, what we commonly say, soft is harder than hard. Soft skills are harder to teach than hard skills. Business schools nowadays find a very hard time trying to find experienced faculty members that could actually teach emotional intelligence or leadership or, uh, you know, uh, uh, collaboration intelligence, all these, these soft skills that, that one has to have, you know, to be able to, to, to manage and to manage projects effectively, to manage people effectively. And then the second axe is the usage of technology that, that we talked about, how to get the right data, transform it into information and make decisions out of it. And the third axe is actually entrepreneurial spirit. Now, there is what we call entrepreneurship and what we call entrepreneurial spirit. We need to teach our students, whether they're going to be entrepreneurs or not, 
the entrepreneurial spirit, meaning how to be, even if they work for a company, how to have this entrepreneurial spirit to say, I need to create value every day that God created. I am not here for salary, I'm here for value creation. I'm here, I am, whatever department I'm in, I'm actually part of a small enterprise and I need to create value for that enterprise. We don't have that, that, that thing. And then of course, the third reason why we, we, management and business education matters today more than any other uh, time is employability. How to raise employability of our students. How to increase the rate of insertion to the job market. And that comes back to the fit. The key word is the fit and the match. How to fit the skills you're giving to these students to what the market is needing, needing is requiring, pretty much. That's Merci de, de votre contribution et je, je pense que maintenant on pourrait prétendre à une visibilité par rapport à la situation du business school en Afrique finalement. Et, et c'est quelque chose quand même qui porte beaucoup d'espoir et, et, et le, le message d'espoir il est clair dans les défis que vous avez tracés au cours de votre entretien et sur lesquels eh, normalement les Africains devraient eh, se mettre à, au travail pour eh, qu'on qu puisse avancer. Donc, euh, encore une fois, merci de cette euh, contribution et bonne continuation pour votre association.